They talk about how big his dick is. Oh, and then they give Nina shit, like talking about riding a horse. I'm like, wow, children are watching this movie. Wow. And I do not want to be the, the person. Thankfully, I'm not a dad, so I don't have to answer the question. Like, Why are they talking about riding horses in the ghetto of New York? <laughs> <laughs> it's those police horses, you know? Yeah. And like, uh... <laughs> Welcome to the What's Our Verdict podcast, where we fashion ourselves cinematic judge and jury. My name is JJ Crowder. I'm here with my co-host, Javier Ortiz. What is up, my nerds? And Ian Anderson. Some shit. We appreciate your help growing the podcast. Go ahead and hit that follow or subscribe button. Tell a friend about us. Go check out our website, whatsourverdict.com, where you can listen to all of our episodes. Sign up for our newsletter to get exclusive content and updates. Pick up some merch, interact with us, and listen to our What's Our Verdict TV episodes as well. The question we always ask is, if you ever find yourself wondering if you should spend the time, money, or both on a movie, to help with that question, each week we put a movie on trial, discuss the facts, pass judgment, and let you know our verdict. Today we're reviewing In the Heights. It was released June 11th, 2021. It was written by Kira Alegria Hudez. It was directed by John M. Chu. It stars Anthony Ramos, Melissa Barrera, Leslie Grace, Corey Hawkins, Olga Meredy, Gregory Diaz IV, and Jimmy Smits. Uznavi, a sympathetic New York bodega owner, saves every penny every day as he imagines and sings about a better life. If you haven't seen this movie and you want to avoid spoilers, now's the time to pause the podcast, go watch the movie, come back, pick up where you left off. If you don't mind spoilers, hang out with us because we're about to spoil the shit out of this thing. Yeah, let's deep dive, guys. We talked about the spoiler free and obviously you guys aren't lovers of the movie. I did have a good time, though, and I mentioned it in the spoiler free that I think part of it is... I can't say that part of it's not. How about that? The fact that we've watched a lot of heavy movies lately, a lot of serious shit, frightening shit, intense movies. So this one, because of the fact that the majority of it's the singing, it covers some, obviously, well, it tries to cover some deep topics, doesn't really do very well in most cases, but it does try, but it does it in a lighthearted fashion. Most of the time, there's some songs and dance and cool things like that and some pool parties and some blackout no power everybody's hot and sweaty dancing weird shit going on but i had fun watching it and like i said i think maybe it was because it was just lighthearted and less intense than anything we've watched recently i feel like we've watched all these intense movies and we watched this and i was kind of like uh eh. like where's the intensity where's the like i don't know you know also felt like this had the right to be intense right like if we're gonna tackle things like like latino americans crawling their way out of whatever situation they're in let's do it not, not, not like this half-assed story about two uh, freshmen in college couples and whatever other salon bullshit you're trying to feed me right like tell a story no freaking story here made me mad <laughs> that's fair I will say that I didn't love in fact it wasn't even didn't love the whole storyline with Benny and what was her name? Nina. Nina. I liked mm -hmm. her story. I liked the things that they talked about with her, the whole college thing, going to Stanford, having the struggles there. But I felt like Benny and the, her relationship was like such an afterthought that it didn't add any value whatsoever to this movie. And I think that one was so distracting for me. Like when I found myself really losing interest in the movie and being like, okay, what can I do while this is going on? Is anytime those two were having like a romantic moment. And it's sad too, because the visuals that their last performance where they're like dancing on the side of the building, visually, that was a really bitching moment. Like I enjoyed that performance. Other than the fact that I had no real emotional tie to their relationship. So everything that was going on other than visually looking cool was a waste to me. I thought she was an annoying, what, 19 year old girl, right? Like her whole character was super annoying. She's like, I'm done with Stanford just because we missed the deadlines or, or whatever. I'm like, look. And then she's she was later like, well, I just don't want dad to sell the business or whatever. I'm like, then say that. If you're this big adult now and you can make adult decisions, then have adult conversation with your fucking dad. You can't. Well, and then like, she's like, we missed the deadline. And then her dad's like, no, I'm going to go call them. And then she immediately goes to the salon. She's like, I dropped out. She's just like announcing left and right. Like, ah, I'm done. I dropped out. I'm done. While her dad, literally the next scene is like paying for it. Like her whole story was just stupid. Right. And you don't, you're, it's not justified till near the end of the movie where she talks about her experiences. And I'm like, I mean, that's what happens when you go to Stanford. Okay. 
That's a friggin' Ivy League school. Of course, it's full of a bunch of pretentious, rich white people. Like, there are plenty of colleges where that would not happen. Anyway, Ugh. okay. Anyway, and then like you don't even you don't even understand like what is going on in her head till the end of the movie at that point, and then you're like, okay, I get why she doesn't want to go back anymore. Right? I just it was just not a good character, not a good story. And like the only arc she had was actually I'm gonna go back to school so that I can help other people. I'm like, fucking cool. Good for you. <laughs> you didn't have a plan of what you were doing in college before you went. Like most people don't actually have a plan for college when yeah, they Yeah, that's because we come out of comfy little neighborhoods where our well, families still have to sell businesses to send us there. If my family had to sell their livelihood to make sure I went to college, I would damn well make sure I have a plan. And if I had to hear her say, let me listen to my block one more time, I would have <laughs> shot myself in the face. That's uh, maybe, fair. maybe is like, is that what New York is like? Are you guys just jacking off to your city block all the time? Like what, what is, what is up with you guys? <laughs> weirdos. Do you not uh, like New York, Javier? I have no was problem it? with New York. Oh. I've only been once, right? I don't. Oh, like was it not you that was doing that? Oh, I okay. definitely. Not a fan. Somebody doesn't like New York. I oh. like New York for like a day because they got great food, like unbelievable food. Yeah, I was only there for a day, literally a day. Yeah, it's I was great. like, yeah, this is pretty cool. Like, I didn't have any like run ins with New Yorkers that I was like, damn, New Yorkers, you know, like I've never met a New Yorker I didn't like. Uh, but if New Yorkers are like that chick on this movie and, and they say, let me listen to my block every other scene. Uh, yeah, I have a problem with New York. <laughs> you know, so Javier, what would you rather do than watch this movie again? Oh my oh gosh, dude. I don't know. To be honest, I need more preparation, but I will tell you this. I was playing runescape i started playing runescape while watching this movie runescape for those of you who don't know <laughs> is like a medieval clicker game from like 2000 this game is like 20 years old no dude who's almost 30 and pays a mortgage has any business playing this game <laughs> and i was playing this game while watching this movie because that's how terrible this movie is that's exactly 20 years old out here, 2001. So apparently I would rather go back to middle school than watch this movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shoot. That's fucking great. So we know how you – I, I think Benny and, and – and her were a complete failure. Jay just like, um, we know how you feel, so please shut the fuck no, up. No, 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 <laughs> no. It's actually the exact opposite. We know how you felt about Benny and Nina now. Okay, let me ask you this then. Let me on the flip side. You, and Nina obviously pissed you off because she was being a child about her experiences. And, and it was kind of funny. I did laugh at one moment, like you said, when she was like telling everybody that she dropped out. Because I was like, look. I don't live in a close knit neighborhood, but I live in a close knit family. And I've also lived in Arizona in a city that was predominantly Latino. And that shit gets around faster than a fucking tornado in the South in the middle of summer. So there's no way that she says that shit in the salon and dad doesn't know about it 10 minutes later. Oh, for sure. <laughs> Especially like I will give them this. Like Latinos are that gossipy, hundred <laughs> percent, right? <laughs> so of course someone's texting her dad like, Dude, "What? She dropped out? Yeah, oh for sure." And that, so I did laugh at that. But what do you think about Benny and take Nina out of it? So I mean, we kind of talked offline, and I hope you don't go quite as far off as you did offline because then I got to edit your ass again. But Oh, you're just afraid of the good points I made. World's <laughs> yeah, not ready for that. That's it. <laughs> um, but with Benny and his, the relationship that he has with Nina's dad, and I can't think – Jimmy Smith's his character. I can't – don't know why I can't think of the character's actual name. But The dad? Um, oh. Yeah, the dad. What's uh, – I don't know, but he reminds me of the dad Kevin. from Spy Kids. Kevin. He is the dad from Spy Kids. Oh, good. That's why he reminded me of the kid dad from Spy Kids. I know. I, Jimmy Smith's for me is always like, so I, I know him from NYPD Blue, like back in the day. And then Star Wars. He was in the Star Wars movie, a couple Star Wars prequel movies. That's great. Okay. Yeah. So he was Bail like, Organa yeah. in those. But then what I loved him in was Dexter. He was a bad guy in like see, one of the seasons of Dexter. Um, I saw like the first two or three seasons of Dexter. I don't. He, I, don't I think know. he was in the fifth season. Oh, okay. Because uh, the 
it might have been the fourth. I think it was the fourth because the third season was the one with John Lithgow as the big bad, and every season after that was kind of diminished because John Lithgow was the greatest villain ever in that show. But yeah, like he might. I don't know if he was the dad in that or not. But no, looking up. Maybe. But anyway, so what did you think of Benny? Because I don't know. Like, I liked the fact that he was like, I guess I should say I liked the part where the blackout happened when the first the blackout first happened. And he found his way to the, the taxi dispatch. And then it was him and Jimmy Smith sitting in there just doing it together through this blackout, trying to help everybody get home. And, and direct. I liked that scene. But I, I think that was like the only scene between them with them in it that was really good. And maybe that was just me, but so I kind of wanted to see what you guys thought. Cause I did like that scene. I have a question about that scene though. Since taxis are constantly going, wouldn't there already be people there in there doing dispatch? That late. It's a good question. I would assume that late at night that you might not with that small of a taxi company. It may just be one of those things where they kind of do, maybe they don't take calls that late. Maybe it's just a, you're driving around with your light on. I don't know. I don't know enough about the taxi business, but it's a good question. I Yeah, this is one of those movies where I started getting a lot of those questions instead of questions about like the characters and the plot and all that <laughs> other jazz. So I apologize if I kind of derail a little no, bit. No, I... But- I like that scene too. The one thing about Benny though, is I felt like towards the end, he just kind of narratively gets pushed to the side. Like he has that experience of the dispatch and you're like, Oh, and then they, him and Nina have that dance, but there's not like, I don't know. I don't see any character arc. I don't see any like development from him. He's just kind of there. Yeah. I don't see the point of him. Like what's even like, he's not even a supporting character, right? He's like, just kind of, like Nina's not better off because he's there. It's not like he helps her like in her story arc and he doesn't help the dad in his story arc. In fact, I remember uh, he was like during that dinner scene when Nina yeah. is arguing and he's like, you're not listening. And I was like, holy shit. Like no Latino dad would let this dude, his employee and his daughter's boyfriend speak to him that way. Like, Okay. I don't know how you guys do it in Puerto Rico, Lynn Manuel, but like <laughs> I would not fly. No, I I had a hard time with that one too. When he spoke up, I was like, "Ooh, that's your boss." Like, yeah, you should probably tone it down a touch. Because like, wow, this neighborhood is real tight knit because <laughs> there are zero consequences to that. Well, and I won't I won't lie. So there was a couple of moments with Benny too that I laughed because like. But it also proves to me that he was a worthless character, at least in this version. I'd be interested to know if in the Broadway version, like he has more because Broadway plays pretty long. It was what I understand. So even longer than this movie was, which most plays are. But I'd be interested to know if he has more of a pivotal part, because in this movie, like to me, the biggest thing Benny provides besides that one scene, which was like 30 seconds long at most when it was actually meaningful, is dick jokes. All the the ladies in this movie talking about his giant dick. Oh, oh yeah, because he's like, black. Yeah, there's like four <laughs> times they talk about how big his dick is. Oh, and then they give Nina shit, like talking about riding a horse. I'm like, wow, children are watching this movie. Wow. And I do not want to be the, the person. Thankfully, I'm not a dad, so I don't have to answer the question. With, Why are they talking about riding horses in the ghetto of New York? <laughs> It's those police horses, you know, yeah. and like, uh, <laughs> dude, but during that, that dispatch scene, I'm like, they're, they're getting calls. They're like, there's a pregnant lady. You got to get her to the hospital or like, all, like things like that. I'm like, maybe I have the wrong perspective of New Yorkers, but you're telling me that there's a blackout for three days in New York and there's no looting going on. Okay. Sure. <laughs> There's no one getting stabbed, needs to go to the hospital. Okay. You're from just south of L.A., buddy, so I think you're just thinking the wrong city. No, I think the same thing would happen in L.A., too. No, I know. That's what I'm saying. No, I don't know. I'm sure you're right. There probably would be. I think the same thing would happen in Provo, Utah. That's fair. Well, I know it happened in Provo, Utah. Yeah. People are animals is what I'm saying. A bunch of moron white kids would be like, let's go steal some shit because they'd be high and taking some prescription painkillers, <laughs> watching porn while they drive to this place that they're going to steal. Anyway, that's, our, that's my take on Provo. 
Just kidding. No, nope, that's Not exactly really, right. Yeah, exactly everyone's high and just correct. watching porn everywhere. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Everybody. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, what really bothered me about the whole there's a pregnant lady, you got to get her to the hospital is why wouldn't you call 911? <laughs> <laughs> Because a I mean, taxi can get them there faster. I mean, that's yeah. probably true. <laughs> and, it's cheaper. <laughs> and it's way cheaper. <laughs> way cheaper. That's fair. The other part that I struggle with is like this weird relationship between the main character, Uznavi, not- and Navi? and yeah, which, Uznavi, which was the funniest name background. Yeah, I've yeah that's no, probably the that. only point I laughed at. Yeah, because I was like, that's not a Latin name, is it? And I was like. And I'm so glad that they explained. I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm not an idiot. That's not a Latin name. (laughs) Nope. (laughs) It's a military name. (laughs) Um, But so him and Vanessa, like, weirdest relationship ever. And, like, to me, like, the fact that they end up together, there's no payoff for that. Like, I'm like, how did they get there? All they did was fight and then randomly make out twice. Like... (laughs) Yeah, that's not going to work out in the long run. No, it was Vanessa's weird. character is another character where I'm like, what is the point? What, what? So she is a uh, fashion designer, right? She like designs clothes. Why would her, why would Vanessa's problems be solved by renting out an apartment somewhere else? Well, yeah. And even more so the fact that you're in New York, downtown New York. I heard what she said. I don't care if you have a co-signer. She said, what was it for? What was the the number that the realtor that she was talking to or the lady? Yeah, the lady she was talking to and she was walking through that apartment and gave her the application. You have to make four times the rent. OK, oh, yeah. what is four times the rent in downtown New York? Fucking ungodly amounts of money. It's ridiculous amounts of money. Yeah, like New York's expensive, like unrealistically yeah. expensive. So when you talk about because if you think, OK, so say your rent for some reason was a thought, which most places now with a, a nice apartment studios even are upwards of a thousand dollars a month. I mean, you got to make $4,000 a month to qualify. There's, there's no way that you're renting somewhere for a thousand bucks a month in New York. Hell, and that's what I'm saying. Like right now in Provo, Utah, it probably costs you close to that to rent a studio, which means in downtown New York, yeah, you're three or four grand minimum. Yeah. Which means you're making ten to twelve thousand dollars a month in order to qualify for this apartment. And I understand that this lady owns the, the co-signer owns a salon that she now has in the Bronx because she's got to move. But ah, that's a lot, man. That's a lot. And how's she going to pay that rent? She is a nail girl at best in the Bronx. <laughs> yeah, I know. And I mean, I'm, at the end I'm of the with movie, you, dude. Like, I don't, I don't understand how her finances even, work. Yeah, and even at the end of the movie, like, okay, so she makes these cool clothes that her now husband sells out of his bodega. You're still that you're not going to make that much money. No, I'm not going to buy a shirt right next to canned beans. <laughs> <laughs> no. And if you told me, yeah, these are just rags from a painter down the street. <laughs> <laughs> it's a drop cloth with some paint on it. <laughs> what? what? Oh. oh, shit. So dumb. While I liked his character, their relationship bothered me a lot because it was just like, it was so weird. Like, and at the club, like, why would he not go dance? Look, I get the dude's a weirdo and he's a little bit chicken shit about it. But really? You just let her go dance with everybody? And then you have the balls to like call her a whore, basically, for shaking her ass all night long with somebody. You told her to go do it, dude. Yeah, I'm like, you've got the balls to call her out like that, but you don't have the balls to go dance with her. Right? Come on, dude. Apparently, he's pretty good at dancing. <laughs> yeah. Fuck, I don't know. Like, I was so confused by that. But I will say... The two characters that I thoroughly enjoyed in this movie were Abuela Claudia, loved her, and then I loved the kid, Sonny. Yeah, so those are the only two characters that I felt like represented real issues that real people go through. That's fair. Right? Like, this kid is undocumented, and he just realizes, I can't go to college. My future is, like, non-existent. That's a real struggle. It's a real problem. Well, and it's interesting, and I, I'll be careful about how I share this because obviously it's none of my business, but recently I've spoken with someone who works with someone that is – they're a dreamer, which if you don't know what that means, which they reference that throughout this movie, right, is 
someone that can be in the country, can work in the country, but they're not a citizen of the United States. And this person's been trying to change their name and which they cannot do in this in the States, because while they're OK to live here, legal to work here, because they're not a citizen, you can't change your name. You can't make changes like that that are, to me, fundamental things that I don't give a shit where you're from. It's what you're known as here in this country. Why can't that change? Which I'm sure there's some bloated, stupid legal reasons. But like, so this that storyline really hit me when they talked about him being undocumented or technically he would be a dreamer to the point that at this point he mentioned he was a dreamer. So again, he's there legally-ish, can work there, but he doesn't have the right to go to college. He can't change his name. He can't do all of those things. And that's pretty shitty. And that sucks because Usnavi is like, I want to go back to the Dominican Republic, yeah. right? And Sonny's like, I was like two years old when I was there. I have no memory of that place. New York is my city, right? Like the United States is my country. How much would it suck to have that much like pride in where you call home and that place not recognize you as either a citizen or like a member or, or a, a part of that group, right? Yeah. So I get that. Like that, that sucks. Mm -hmm. That's a real problem. And I appreciated the narrative behind that. Yeah, yeah, I loved his character every time he and the kid was good. The little the actor that played him, he was very charming on screen. Gregory Diaz, the fourth. Oh, his little pool rap was yeah. like the only good rapping. Yeah. Well, and then he goes <laughs> off like at the end, like I liked that he he didn't lose the tone of who he was either, because in that big one where the the lady that owned the salon, she comes out and kind of takes I don't want to say takes the abuelas place, but like she moves in as like the new matriarch style. She was my favorite character. She was really fun to watch. Yeah. And then she comes in and he still comes in and, and they really kind of diminished it. Unfortunately, when they brought in Vanessa, cause she started coming yes. in and being bitchy, but he comes in and he like, he starts rapping again in that last scene before the power comes back on about the fact that, look, he's not going to give up, but there's some truths that are really shitty and hard that he has to deal with. Mm -hmm. And then Vanessa came in and I was like, ah, fuck, now it's ruined. You ruined the moment with her because she's just whiny. So whiny. She's so whiny. We're movie. powerless. I'm like, you literally got everything that you wanted. Yeah. You've got your damn apartment. You've got like, that's all you wanted. It's a really short list. Yeah. You were able to go get some ice cold champagne later on in this movie. This dude, this kid's like in the worst, in one of the worst positions in this movie. And even though he's bitching, he has a right to bitch and he still has a positive spin on it to a degree. Mm -hmm. She's like got everything she wants. She wears these really nice clothes throughout. She makes clothes. She has all the opportunities. Somebody co-signed for her for probably an extremely ridiculous apartment that she can't afford. And she still comes in and whines. I'm like, oh, shut up. Yes. Yeah, I had a hard time with her. I'm like, dude, that is that's pretty privilege right there. Right. Yeah. Like you get away with a lot more because you're hot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Funny. But yes, the what's her name? Oh, God. Carla, I think, is the the owner of. No, that was the weird, stupid character. She was kind of like the dumb girl. I, oh, can I say I also appreciate is... seeing Stephanie Beatrice in this movie? That's her. That's the one I was talking about. She played yeah. Carla. I love her so much. What is she in? I don't know. She's her. a Brooklyn Nine Nine. Brooklyn Nine Nine. Oh, I was wondering if that was her. She's a completely different character. Gotcha. Brooklyn Nine Nine. She's like all leather, like this biker. She literally speaks like her voice is this high, like kind of high pitch voice. And Brooklyn Nine Nine, she like lowers her voice, and she's like always in this. She has this like resting bitch face in that show, like okay. the complete opposite of who she is as a person, but also what we see in this movie. <laughs> yeah. And I just love it. I love seeing it. That's hilarious. Yeah. Like she was funny and she had a moment in that same scene where like right before the power comes on, where she like, can like talks about her. Oh, where she's heritage. like, she's part, she's part Cuban, <laughs> part Puerto Rican, but she says she's from the Queens or whatever. <laughs> yeah. She has like, like four different heritages. <laughs> <laughs> it was funny. Daniela, that's the character that owns Daniela. the salon, played by Daphne Rubin Vega. She was really funny throughout the movie, but I liked how she kind of stepped up, right, when she needed mm -hmm. to, because the whole city, the whole little village, the town is like crushed because Claudia passes away, which was I, her solo in the, like, where were, it was bouncing between the subway and Cuba. I, I really enjoyed that whole performance. That was really cool. 
Yeah. I, one of my favorite lines is when she tells everyone that they're moving locations mm -hmm. and they're like complaining about it. And she's like, are you kidding me? Our people have overcome dictators like conquistadors, like lists all these things that like Hispanic people have gone through. She's like, you guys can travel for 10 minutes on a train. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, get it, girl. Well, and I love too, like when they're all sitting there slack in these chairs like sweating because it's 100 degrees outside and there's no power and she comes out like just railing on them she goes since when is heat a problem for the team that people? was <laughs> such a funny line to me because like having been in like latin american countries in the summer it is hot and humid <laughs> as balls guys like yeah. oh so yeah and there's no ac in like a lot of these houses <laughs> so you're just screwed dude it's yeah i laughed because i lived i lived in yuma arizona for a few months and i don't know if you i think i've told you guys this but the craziest thing so yuma's they're known for lettuce they produce the most lettuce in the country so when you go to your gross yuma arizona which oh, is I always like thought that was a like a like a water water dense project oh no oh. you're so there's Yuba, which is near. No, no, I mean lettuce. I thought it took a lot of water oh, to make it does. lettuce. Oh, okay. It does. It's it's an odd thing. And Yuma has very little. Yeah, it's yeah. the weirdest fucking thing. But yes, they are the lettuce, highest lettuce producing place out there in the state, in the, in the country anyway. So you go to Yuma, you drive down there, and there's just lettuce fields for ages. And it's crazy. So what they do is... That county that Yuma is in is something like 65 or 70 percent Hispanic. And then what happens is, is this, the, the population actually almost doubles during the day because it's right near the border of Mexico. And they bring up San Luis, Mexico. They go down into Mexico. They load up these big white school buses with two porta potties on a trailer behind the buses. And all of these workers that live in Mexico hop on this bus at 3:34 in the morning. They drive them into Yuma, Arizona. They hop off the bus, they unload the porta potties next to the lettuce fields. Then these guys go out and pick lettuce for 8 to 10 hours a day in 120 degree heat in Yuma, which is the hottest. Like I parked in the back end of a Walmart parking lot and I walked to Walmart probably maybe 100 feet. And the bottoms of my shoes melted on the blacktop. It was 124 degrees in Yuma that day. Dude, what heat like that you get out of your car, you're like, I'm in an oven. It was the worst. The hottest I ever saw. Hundred. I have a picture of one of those bank temperature things that says 127 degrees. And I, I was like, yeah. this is some bull shit. And, the, and I'm bitching because I got to walk from my car to the door of Walmart. And I'm like melting as i go and then i'm like man these guys come up and every day they pick lettuce in the sun for eight hours a day and i'm like and i bitch about walking to walmart front door from my car for 100 feet i can't even imagine yeah that work ethic is not something that i share with my people <laughs> <laughs> oh shit I it's not even like i believe in working smarter not harder i just believe in working less yeah so. <laughs> And I tell that story because I think it, it was crazy to me the first time I saw it and I asked what was going on. They're like, yeah, this, this is what happens. I was like, okay, that's a whole different – I mean, we outsource. We have companies that outsource shit all the time to different countries, India, China, places like that. But we actually insource workers from another country to come and do what my lazy white ass won't do. That blows my mind. Yeah, so when people are like, the Mexicans are stealing all our jobs – I'm like, well, I mean, yeah, they're taking the jobs that a lot of us just don't want to do. So I think I, I think what you mean to say is thank you. Exactly. I ain't doing it. <laughs> I'll quit eating lettuce before I try to go out and you make it. So. You're like, lettuce isn't even that good. Yeah, I, don't, I don't eat fucking salads, dude. <laughs> I'll use spinach, bitch. I don't care. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, I really like, there were a few characters that like every time they were on the screen, I was enthralled because the actors played them very well. They did, they had really cool numbers. And I really think that, like you said, Javier, they touched on some real topics that need to be discussed and, and are some real things that, and it, they were great, which I liked the dad too. I liked Jimmy Smith as an actor. So I liked the dad. I think he was, they, they really watered down the actual reaction he would have had at dinner 
but I did love at the end when he's like looking at everybody's like, get out. Yeah. Uh, it's like, we're done here. I, another part of this movie is they don't translate a lot of stuff for you. So there's like, I loved. yeah, I actually kind of liked that. There's a lot of like, they switch between Spanish and English. Like the majority of it is in English, sure. obviously, but there's a lot of like little things that, you know, it's not major plot points or anything, but it's, you know, a little stuff to drive home, like what they're thinking, what they're saying. And I was like, that's really interesting. That's like someone who speaks Spanish, like I was getting both of them. So with that, like with that in mind, I feel like this was really made for a Hispanic community, right? Because if you don't speak Spanish, your hand isn't held through. <laughs> no, in fact, I was, I laughed because I was watching it and I my when it started and they were talking in Spanish and singing in Spanish, I was like, oh, look, they're not putting subtitles. So they don't, mm -hmm. Like you said, they're not holding my hand going, here's what they're talking about. Right. And I think there was only two times in the movie where they actually put subtitles. Yeah. And one Vanessa was when... being cat called. Yeah. That's important to translate. Uh huh. Yeah. You got to know how <laughs> shitty they're being to her. <laughs> Which is a very real thing, by the way. Oh, when, I'm I was sure. in, when I was in Costa Rica, it's not cute. Like that movie made it seem like it was cute. Like we're professing, yeah. I'm, I'm professing my love. No, it is like. Let's just say that the women's rights and respect movements in the United States are, are a lot farther along than they are in a lot of Latin American countries. But then there was another line, I think, that was from Claudia, from Abuela Claudia, that was, but it was like an actual plot point when she was talking to Usnavi. So, but that was it. There was only two points where they actually translated to English for you. I liked it. I liked that fact because it doesn't take away from the movie for me to not know exactly what they're saying. Cause you still no. get the gist of the conversation mm -hmm. that something's going on that it doesn't. Yeah. It, I liked it. I, I appreciated that they didn't do that. And in a lot of places they do, they use both English and Spanish phrase and words in like a song. Mm -hmm. So when she's going through a song of like, just breathe when she's, when she's saying, uh, respira, that's mm. breathe in Spanish, right? So like they'll they'll translate it that way. So you're not missing out on anything the majority of the time. But yeah, like I thought that was good. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I liked it. I thought it was really good. And some of the music was really good. I mean, say what you want about Lin-Manuel Miranda. And I don't like to listen to him speak. I'm not bashing his ability to write songs. Like yes. I think the songs that he, I, he, I'm sure he's a brilliant songwriter and yeah. like, like playwright. Sure. I mean, he wrote the he wrote the the outline for this, the the actual Broadway play version. He didn't write the actual I don't think he wrote the play itself, but he wrote the outline for it at the very least. Yeah. And then, of course, Hamilton is a stroke of genius. It's fun to watch. It's entertaining. I just um, have such but I don't like issue. him like in Hamilton. He's by far the worst singer, like oh, not even comparable. Sure. Right. So instead of having the best possible production that he can have for the people who are spending money to watch this, instead, he strokes his own ego to cast himself as the lead. So that's the type of dude we're dealing with. Guess where Lin-Manuel Miranda is from? Just guess. Wild guess. We're watching a movie called Into the Heights. If you had to guess, knowing what a pretentious douchebag he is, guess where he's from? Washington Heights. Washington Heights. <laughs> so this dude writes a play, casts himself as the lead, then goes writes another play, or at least the outline, about where he's from. This dude sucks so badly. Oh, and funny. then in this, and I, I got to show you guys this real quick, because I was, if you Google, if you Google Into the Heights, cast <laughs> so you have anthony ramos who's the main character guess who comes in at number two whoops there you go <laughs> number two is the dude who sings about snow cones that is the number two <laughs> dude listed on this well so what's what's he say so is that what is it called Pir piraguero Piraguas, which is Piragua. it's uh I didn't know what it was, but it's uh it's like a snow cone esque thing from Puerto Rico. Gotcha. So in so his they, character's name in the movie, according to the cast list on IMDb, is Peter Guero. Yeah, it's is yeah. that like a direct translation or version of that? Like no, a, it's like it's basically the snow cone guy. 
is basically gotcha. what that means. That's fucking crazy. That's what I kind of <laughs> figured because he was. I I could t- tell that this there was the same root in yeah. the what you know. But I it was funny, and I won't lie. So I hated him as the snow cone guy in this movie because this is another point when i was watching it going there was no point in no his point the only thing i and i think he would have been fine so he also has this big moment in that last where the before, right before the power comes on that big performance where he's up on the balcony and he's singing I, I was like okay i get that you're gonna get your cameo i know that about you but i don't need you as the snow cone guy just do that part because i didn't hate him in that piece because he was kind of a background. That yeah, just, if he was he just up. some dude in the neighborhood. Yeah. Sure. But yeah, I really hated his whole, like that was and another part. That I'm like, stupid that- little feud with the ice cream man. Like, yeah, which was just another reason. So the, and it's funny. So the lead guy, the lead character, Anthony Ramos, he is also in Hamilton. Oh yeah. And a lot of these guys are. Sure. Right. Benny was in Hamilton. Then the guy that was the ice tr- cream truck guy was also in Hamilton. So they put that in there just to pull all the this Hamilton guy in there. And he has a freaking Hamilton song as the freaking waiting music. Okay. Yeah. So but, I laughed my ass off at that because that is my favorite song in all of Hamilton. Yeah, it's mine too. King George losing his shit. So I actually had a great giggle at the whole music, but that should have been the only nod to Hamilton. Yeah. And if I, that would have been it, I would have been perfectly fine because that shit made me laugh. No, like because all I thought about was King George like spitting. <laughs> as he oh, he singing. does actually because he spits so much in that song. Did you know that that guy is um the the guy who plays the uh, King George is uh-huh. Christoph from yeah. um, Frozen. Yep, I did, yeah. and he is also the lead. Did you guys ever watch the show on Netflix, Mine Hunter? Oh no, I heard it was good though. It's fan fucking tastic. You should watch it, especially the first season is out of this world good. But he's the lead in Mindhunter, mm. which is a very different role. He was also in Glee. Oh, I'm sure he was in Glee. He had to be in Glee. Yeah. So anyone who's famous and can sing was in Glee at some That's point. That's fair. Right? He's an amazing singer, like out of control good singer. So anyway, but I, yeah, I laughed. Stupid. But I, Lin Manuel Miranda was just. It was pointless to have him in this movie so much. It was just pointless to have him in Hamilton. It's pointless for him to perform because he's not as good as everyone else. And it's so obvious to see, right? He can sing better than me. Well, sure. He can sing probably better than average, but you're putting yourself up against Broadway singers. Yeah. And you are by far the worst one out of all of them. Yeah. Why would you and do if, that to yourself? I don't watch this and think, wow, he's really talented. I yeah. watch this and think, wow, this dude sucks and he's a piece of shit. <laughs> well, and in Hamilton, it was even worse than this one because in Hamilton, the cast is so fucking good. It's yeah. out of control. And it's full of people who actually know how to rap. And Lin-Manuel has this nasally voice. Like oh. he would have been bullied by all these black dudes. <laughs> If these black dudes also weren't theater nerds. Yeah. Jesus fair. Christ. But yeah, the people he sings with, with in Hamilton. Alexander Hamilton. Oh my gosh, dude. <laughs> Literally, I bet you you could pick a random person in New York and they could probably perform better than him. Probably. Just probably. any dude off of Broadway, you could probably find someone who can do it better than him. Yeah, and I, I think I noticed it most because, like, when I watched Hamilton on, like, Disney+, Plus, like, it was one of those things where I was like, okay, this is fun to watch. So I kind of ignored the fact that he was wor- that much worse than everybody else. But then I was watching Some Good News during the pandemic with John Krasinski because he's, like, my favorite human being right oh, now. Oh, yeah. Before. And he actually did something cool. So this little girl had tickets to see Hamilton on Broadway, and she had to cancel because they stopped flying everywhere. And so she missed this. So he, Krasinski, because he's fucking Krasinski, not only introduces, because she's also a big, uh, this little girl was also a big Mary Poppins fan. So he introduces his wife to her. Oh, oh, that's right, because she played because she played Mary relaunch, Poppins right? in the relaunch, in the re, yeah, in the this sequel, and then he gets the entire original cast from Hamilton to get on this Zoom call and sing Alexander Hamilton to her, and I'm watching this going, wow, he's really not that good. <laughs> <laughs> comparatively right look i can't sing for shit 
But when you compare him to the rest of that cast, fuck, it's bad. That's what I'm saying. And like, every time I say that, people always fire back with, you know, he wrote the play, right? I'm like, Very you don't different. see J.K. Rowling casting herself as Hermione Granger, right? That doesn't mean anything. Yeah. You're like, what? Because when authors or writers, they have the chance to produce something at that scale, they typically want it to be as best as it can be. Yeah. Well, Not it's this different- guy. Yeah. Yeah, this guy, it does not care. Do you think him and Zack Snyder are best buddies? Oh, fuck. Probably. Oh, dude. <laughs> probably. Zack Snyder just to get in and do some acting, and he's right there with him. <laughs> well, fuck, his name's on it enough. He probably could. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's rough when you talk about it. And you're right. It's like most authors of a book don't write the screenplay for the movie about their book because it's a different skill set. Mm-hmm. Just because you can write a fantastic musical and write good music and write a cool story doesn't mean you should play the lead in said story. Oh, and you know, I've heard, I'm not, I haven't verified this, but I've heard it's because he got rejected from Broadway so many times, probably because he sucks that he went and wrote his own play so he could cast himself in it. Right. So I'm I like, honestly, describe. the tenacity of that, I respect a lot. Yeah. Also, everyone knows where Washington Heights is. What is this? What is this bullshit like? Say it so people remember. Everyone knows where Washington Heights is. <laughs> what is this? This city's, this town's becoming forgotten. You're from Washington Heights. You should know this. <laughs> Sorry. I no, just, you're good. That bothered me too. So I was about to say positive that I had fun with this movie, and I will say that I did enjoy because the music was good, and I like musicals. I was a musical. I wasn't a musical theater guy. I can't sing for shit, but I was a theater guy in high school. And so I love musicals, especially. Nerd. Good I, yep. I'm a nerd all the way through in every way you could possibly think of for the most part. I think like the whole hiding his, making him seem like he'd gone back to the Dominican Republic to be at his dad's bar. And then it turns out to be, you know, his bodega just revamped. Like I didn't like the trickery of it all. Either. Like I, I would have almost rather him. Well, it's not even almost. I would have rather him not end up with the whiny girl and had him, you know, that not work out. And he actually went back to the Dominican Republic. And then it's almost like a story of him regretting that decision to a degree, right? Like I miss the neighborhood. I miss Washington Heights. I miss the people that I grew up with, but I'm still successful in my life. I love my life, but I have, would I do it differently? Like, I think it could have been a cool story if that was like the whole thing is he's reflecting on if I were to go back, would I do it differently now? You know what I mean? I would have rather him taking that $96,000 and become just the absolute kingpin of Washington Heights. (laughs) He's got his rolling, like, you know, he's got his Escalade that's armored out. He's got his, you know, like his troops. Anyone who stands in his way is just gunned down in the streets, you know? And here I thought, if I, I would have loved to have seen to take the 96 and buy the ice cream truck, buy out the freaking <laughs> snow cone cart. <laughs> the first person to go would be the ice cream snow cone, yeah. dude. <laughs> They're out. That's what I would do with 96 grand. Just a note. The fire department would be pissed at the end of this movie. Three when or got four fire hydrants. Just... Four, and, and why the fuck is there five fire hydrants on one core street corner? Like, <laughs> it seems like such a waste of resources. But what do they do? Burn this place down every year? Like, come the fuck on. Nicole was like, wait, wait, wait. the fire hydrants are going out and these kids wanted to go play in the water. And he's like, no, 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 sit down, shut up. I'm going to tell you how I banged your mom. <laughs> 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 oh shit! Oh, I called her a whore, and then she told me she missed her chance a fucking week later. So stupid. Anyway, dude, that guys... scene was an emotional roller coaster. She's like, "I've Which... got champagne," and he's like, "I'm gonna open up the champagne." I'm like, "Okay, first of all, it was Navi. Pay the fuck attention for yeah. like two seconds, because uh, you're doing the whole club thing again." And then they're just like devolving them arguing, and then it like, and then they were kissing. I was like, "Wow, that was that was a lot." A lot of red flags there, guys, that you should probably really digest. I'm supposed to be excited about your relationship by the end of this thing? And that poor little girl. This dude doesn't even realize that all you got to do is rip off the gold foil of a bottle of champagne. Oh, is it not that hard? (laughs) No. Well, and then he's like, so, and then he says the little metal, the twisty thing. So when you do champagne and I, okay, I'll give you some education. You have... It's corked, which everybody knows. But then there's... Right, I knew that. Right over top of the cork, there's this metal wireframe piece that holds the cork. And then it's got a twist that's twisted really tight. And then there's the, the foil to make it look fancy. So you just rip the foil off. 
then you untwist this thing and that allows you the ability to pop the cork. He's like, the twisty's broken. The problem is if you break that twisty, that thing's going to unwind on its own due to the pressure because there's like a loop at the end of it. So if that loop breaks, it's just two wires that are tied, like twisted together. It's going to untwist. So I'm sitting there going, well, if it broke, it should be just, you just pull that fucker off. Come on. Is this what I sound like when I'm talking about guns? Yes. Like this is just unrealistic. Yes. And most of us sit there and go, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. <laughs> I'm glad that JJ's got got that monopoly in alcohol. Booze knowledge. I'm your guy. <laughs> Booze knowledge. <laughs> and it pisses me off just as a cap to that when people pop the top of a of a champagne bottle and let it fucking spill everywhere. What a waste of a fuck ton of money. I always thought that was a waste. I just thought that was drinking culture. Is that it- not only so the only time that that's okay is like sporting events because that shit's fucking hilarious to watch these guys in a locker room spraying each other with fucking champagne and i laugh at that because i'm like you fuckers are going to be so goddamn sticky in an hour (laughs) it's not even worth doing but it's yeah like when someone does it at a party like it's so stupid it's a waste of booze i want to get drunk and you just spilled half of my bottle that was probably 30 dollars minimum champagne is 30 bucks I mean, you can get cheaper, but it tastes like ass. I do not get drinking, guys. That's so ex- what an expensive hobby. Oh, it's terribly expensive, but it's delicious. All right, should we rate this movie? Yes, we yeah. should. Okay, Javier, why don't you start us off, buddy? Okay, I can't say any worse things or more hurtful things than I've already said. It's probably true. <laughs> <laughs> I will reiterate that the music is good and the choreography is cool, and like some of the cinematography is cool. The storyline's terrible. The character development's terrible. Lynn Manuel Miranda, it's terrible. Everything about this movie is terrible, borderline insulting to Latino Americans and the very real struggles that a lot of people go through that were just almost completely ignored uh, in this movie. So with that said, I'm going to give this a... I'm going to give this a one. I'm going to give this a one. Yeah, I'm going to give this a one. Like I said, it is only partially because I'm not a huge musical fan, but there are some musicals that I like, and I understand that there are good musicals out there. I think even musical fans are not going to be impressed by this movie. So I am not going to watch this again. You you would have to kidnap me (laughs) and prop my (laughs) eyes open with toothpicks. (laughs) <laughs> to make so, me watch this movie again. My question is, and this will be the last time I fucking throw it at you, would you have rather watched The Conjuring? Ah, uh, Dude, honestly, The Conjuring probably would have been more exciting, to be honest. I wouldn't have rather watched it. <laughs> no, I wouldn't say that I'd rather watch it, but it would probably be, it probably would have been a more interesting two hours of my time. <laughs> There you go. There you go. Okay, I'll drop the topic of The Conjuring now. Yeah, dude, you can't just throw The Conjuring in my face every time I complain about watching a shitty movie. Dude, I will say, though, that when you texted (laughs) talking about this movie and I was like, well, the alternative was The Conjuring, you can stop. And you were like, okay, I'll shut up now. Like, I seriously laughed out loud for like 10 minutes. (laughs) Dude, this is The Conjuring. Okay, yeah, no, I'll I'll, I'll just go watch this. (laughs) Yeah. I loved it. It was my favorite text in a long time. Okay, I'll shut up now. <laughs> All right, Ian, what do you rate this movie? So if you couldn't tell, um, I don't have a lot to say about this movie. I'm not a musical fan. It was really long, and I felt like I was getting jerked around to different like plot points and times, and there wasn't like a consistency throughout the whole movie. So I'm going to go with the one. I kind of would just echo the things that you and Javier have said but I'm not as good at diving in depth with movies as you guys. So from the surface level, we're going with a one and I definitely won't watch it again. It's, it's not my style, not my thing. I still haven't even seen Hamilton. So I don't, I can't comment on that. As long as you skip through all of uh, Miranda's parts, it's actually pretty good musical. Which is like 50% of the show. (laughs) Yeah. Unfortunately. I was going to say, if he's the lead, that's going to. He's one of them. you really should watch Hamilton. I will recommend you can watch it on Disney it's, Plus. It's if anything, it's hilarious when he duets with someone who actually knows how to sing. Oh, it is dude. like an angelic voice and nails on a chalkboard. Like the comparison is 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 very funny. So I have to, so he has a duet like with Renee Elise Goldsberry. So she's like one of the she's the Angelica 
who's like one of the love interests or whatever that he marries her sister. Anyway, he, she has one of the most, as you said, Javier, angelic voices on the planet. Like when she sings, it's phenomenal. And he has another one. Philippa Sue, who plays Eliza Hamilton, the, the the sister that he marries, also has an unfathomably beautiful voice. And Javier is so correct. When the two of the, and he has he has duets with both of these women, and when they sing together, you're like, oh, you poor bastard, because <laughs> God, they just make him look so stupid. And then the other person that he sings a lot with <laughs> is Leslie Odom Jr., who plays Aaron Burr, mm-hmm. and Leslie oh. Odom Jr. probably has my favorite voice right now period that guy can sing the fucking ceiling off of a joint and he sings he goes up against Lynn manuel miranda so many times because it's aaron burr versus alexander hamilton and you're just like poor bastard you got shot and out out saying in one moment <laughs> <laughs> double whammy yeah dude it's like, fucking crazy. issue not only did this guy shoot your ass in the end, but he out saying you the entire show. Yeah, but it's fun. It's an entertaining and such a different take on a musical. In the Heights, though, I, I'm not going to lie. I had fun in a lot of parts of this movie, especially the parts that we talked about with the kid Sonny, with Daniela, the, you know, the owner of the salon. Abuela Claudia, she was fantastic. I loved everything that she was part of. So those three characters, and then Jimmy Smith, but he didn't really have a big part, but I liked everything he did. The sad part is, is the young people in this movie, <laughs> other than the youngest kids, Sonny, were very annoying. Like the lead, yeah. they were whiny. They complained well, a lot about shit. More is less, right? He proved that. Yeah. Like every time, and Jimmy Smith is fantastic, but every time he's on the, it, that character was really believable to me. And I liked what he was doing. Mm-hmm. I've seen, and I know people who had their parents have given up things to that extent for the future of their children. So I, it was really believable the way that he did it as a whole. Like there were things that I really enjoyed about this movie, but the things that take away from it really took away from it. The fact that it was two hours and 20 minutes long, it did not need to be more than an hour and 45 minutes because you could didn't even have to be made. To be Well, honest, that's but. fair too, but I would have liked it if it was much shorter and you got rid of this. I think you could have gotten rid of Sonny's character com- or not Sonny, but Benny's character completely. I think it added no value to mm-hmm. the show. The relationship in fact, between him and Nina took away from the movie like it was distracting it wasn't believable it was annoying so if you get rid of him it loosens up a lot of this movie but two hours and 20 minutes is way too long and you feel it the last 40 minutes you feel it but the the music is great there were some very entertaining parts there were some good stuff that balanced for me the bad stuff but i think the biggest detriment is the the whiny characters that lacked any development whatsoever they there was no change from beginning to end for the like the three three of the main characters so the side characters were better than main and it was too damn long but the music was fun there were some really funny parts it's so hard for me because i want to say it's an average movie but i think the bad outweighs the good enough for me to not give it a two and a half or a yes, three it's come to the dark side i'm not going as low the as my other two hard inside i'm not <laughs> my heart has been blackened throughout this <laughs> podcast i look i'm not going as low as you guys but i i am going to go down to a two i was wavering between a two and a three somewhere most of the time i was watching it but i i think a two is appropriate because what is bad is very bad and what is good is extremely entertaining. But yeah, two for me, I probably won't watch it unless Casey wants to watch it. I would, I'll watch it with her. But I like musicals, so it was it was fun for me. And it was lighthearted in most case, in a lot of cases. So I like that too. So there it is, one, one, two. I, I don't know if I can rationally say, yeah, run out and watch this movie. But if you're looking for something that's got some music in it, some entertainment value. Watch literally anything else. <laughs> Yeah, well, anything. maybe not She Dies Tomorrow. There's no music in that, though. No, there's not. But yeah, there's a lot of musicals you could watch. It would be better. Yeah, this is better than She Dies Tomorrow. Yeah, by a long shot. Minus dolphin sex. With that, go check us out on social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all at What's Our Verdict. Come interact with us on our website, whatsourverdict.com. Sign up for our newsletter. We'd love to send you out our uh, exclusive updates and content, things like that. You can also support our podcast through merch, which we have some available. I got some new stuff I'm working on, so keep an eye out for that as well. Next week, Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard should be interesting. It'll be nice. I'm going to get back into a theater on that one because I think you can only see it at theaters that week. So, Ooh, are we going to the theater? I want to go. Yeah, let's let's figure it out. Oh, I'm out of town like most of next week. Yeah, when does it come out? 
Friday. Oh, I'll be back in town Friday. Let's figure it out. So that's next week. Again, we appreciate you tuning in. We'll catch you on the next one. Bye-bye now. Cinemagic out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm.